Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vagam Radian here in Tampa, Florida, where we're covering the National Defense Industrial Association's annual SOFIC Conference and Trade Show, gathering of special operators from around the world, along with the companies that serve them. Our coverage here is sponsored by FLIR, and we're over uh, at not the Sierra Nevada stand, but with Sierra Nevada's uh, Jerry Coburn. Uh, Jerry, thanks uh, very much for uh, taking time with us. You were a retired U.S. Army uh, Lieutenant Colonel, so wanted to point that out. Infantryman, and uh, then in the uh, acquisition uh, business uh, over here at uh, SOCOM headquarters. So generally when folks think of Sierra Nevada, they have a tendency of thinking of aircraft. But sure. you guys are now associated with a vehicle uh, program. Talk to us a little bit about this vehicle and the rather innovative way that it came about through Softworks, uh, the great uh, competition to encourage innovation uh, in, in SOCOM. Talk to us a little bit about the program and, and how it came to be. Yeah, happy to. Uh, so we got involved, uh, our integrated electronic warfare business unit uh, has been involved in this problem space of counter small UAS for about two years in earnest. Uh, we had the opportunity to spend uh, the last year working with a DOD customer to integrate um, a multi-layered solution with uh, a radar from a separate vendor from RADA, uh, an electro-optical sensor from Ascent Vision, and then of course our uh, electronic warfare subsystem all into one user interface. Uh, we went from concept, design, developmental testing, operational testing, and a cycle of about uh, eight months to fielding. Uh, and then this opportunity through Softworks came up uh, with SOCOM to also demonstrate a modified configuration uh, of those same components uh, into a package to display at their rapid prototyping events. Uh, we've been through one already and looking forward to the opportunity to uh, exercise the system uh, at Nellis uh, in, uh, next month. And uh, it's uh, it's on a Colorado frame, which is very popular for uh, for events like this. I was going to make a stupid joke that you know, wait, hey, can you go into a dealership and actually order it with one of these? You probably should talk to the GM guys about that. Um, talk to us about what the next phases of that program are, because SOF is never doing something that's just a demonstration; it's to operationalize the capability. Talk to us about this package and some of the needs it could fulfill for a SOF customer. Yeah, certainly. So, so both for our existing DoD customer. Uh, utilizing the same uh, Mattis configuration and also for SOF, we recognize that the number one uh, variable that will, that will impact the configuration of the system is the threat. Uh, and that threat is a market all to itself, so the configuration and types of uh, commercial off-the-shelf UAS systems and the controller technologies that run them uh, is in an ever-evolving path forward. And so our challenge is to maintain and predict uh, where that technology is going to go so that we can maintain countermeasures uh, and effectiveness at defeating it, uh, both from the detection aspect through uh, radar and EOIR, uh, tracking positive identification, and then the mitigation step at the end. Um, and uh, we talked with uh, Jim Smith uh, and so many others at this conference and, and talking about the UAS threat as being something that's at the forefront, a big problem that needs to be solved because it is a game-changing capability, especially if you have a whole bunch of cheap drones, each one of which has a, has a hand grenade on it, and all of a sudden it's, it's now a significant problem, especially in a swarming capacity. What kind of thinking and what is sort of the state of the art in addressing swarms of unmanned aerial systems, which is how potential, you know, everybody's looking at dispensers to be able to take, you know, for, for example, a munition or, or a payload over a distance and then scatter a whole bunch of these uh, systems at you, which would overwhelm many defenses, whether they're kinetic defenses or, or even if they're um, electromagnetic magnetic beam, you know, any beam focused system also could have a problem. Talk to us a little bit about the state of the art and your thinking to tackle that part of the challenge. Sure. So the. Um a portion of our business unit uh, is very focused on uh, cyber capability and the architecture of our electronic warfare um, suite of systems is modular uh, by design uh, to be a delivery mechanism for cyber payloads and we recognize the fact that the, uh, the ever more sophisticated true swarms of intercommunication between aircraft will require that type of uh, that, that type of capability versus what we're doing today which is technique based jamming of the controller link from the ground station to the aircraft. Uh, we have very good success, a very good success rate right now at defeating all of the vendor's items uh, in the different portions of the commercial uh, spectrum that they operate. But we're probably about six months away from seeing dramatic changes in how our adversaries employ and create uh, new technologies to control those. 
And how, how large of a market is, you know, market is this? Um, every company has to make the calculation for the size of the market to be able to make investment, and you guys have our company that's distinguished itself by making its own internal investments to win, uh, win business. Uh, that's one of your founder's principles, you know, you, you don't get anywhere without making an investment. Uh, tell us a little bit, you know, is this, is this a $5 billion market, a $10 billion market? No, no, how, how large of a market is it that all of the folks here are, are trying to pursue? So it's, 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 a, it's a very good question. Um, we ponder that on a daily basis, and it's hard to put a precise number on that. Um, I think one of the number one drivers is sensitivity to the problem, especially here at Conus. We have not seen a major catastrophic event, fortunately, yet. But if we did, I think the proportionate scale and the dollars invested on the government side would dramatically increase in a short cycle time. Uh, so we gauge our internal invest investment against the anticip anticipation of a major event, an error on the side of caution, uh, to meter out how much of our own dollars we put into uh, the portions of the problem that aren't yet fully solved. And then at the same time, we have to track along with our current DOD customers and meet their specific requirements, uh, which in some weeks is a full-time job by itself. <laughs> Jerry Corburn, Director of Business Development over here at Sierra Nevada, sir. Thanks very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. And best of luck on the experiment. All right. Thank you.